Welcome Blazers! This video is going to teach you how to fly with the Glendale. Not only that, but will also teach you how to get the Glendale in the first place. And also exactly what else you need in order to customize the car and anything else that has to do with that. I will teach you how to fly with the Glendale towards the end of the video. Please stick around because I will go over exactly everything this vehicle has to offer within the customizations. I also I do want to go over a little bit about the pricing of the video of the vehicle on the, on the maximum that you might pay out for this car. It might be a little higher than than I say, but it could be worth a little bit. Could be worth a lot less. Now I want to point out two requirements that will be custom that will be the customizations for the vehicle to learn how to fly. That would be the shunt boost and 100% jump upgrade to, for the vehicle jump. Those are the only two things you need to learn how to start flying with the vehicle. However, it is more complicated than that and I will go over exactly what you need to do later on on exactly how to fly with this vehicle in the most proper way. It will be easy, simple, and just plainly awesome. So stick around, and you will get all the juicy details. So first and foremost, what exactly is the Glendale? So let's look into it. Go on the internet on your phone, travel and transport, go to arenawar.tv, and you're going to go to the Arena War site. Once you're on the site, you want to go to Buy Upgradable Vehicles. Go to Glendale, which is right on top. And you go to Buy It Now or Trade whichever you pick is up to you. Here's the preview of the three sections here of what it could look like. What it does look like it's uh, totally up to you. Alright so once you have the vehicle you're gonna put it into one of your garages obviously and then once you do so uh, you want to purchase a workshop. You don't need anything additional. You just need the basic mechanic, which is what it will give you. You don't need personal you don't need personal quarters or garages or anything like that. All you need is the first mechanic. That's it. So what? And so basically, whatever it says when you first look into the section is what you need. All you gotta do is buy now, and that's it. So you go to the workshop, you press buy now, and you get the place. Then you can get your Glendale and you come toward and you put it into the into the workshop garage. Once you're in, now of course you're gonna go through a cutscene and all, so don't so just get through that before getting into uh, everything else. If it's your first time going into the workshop, you're gonna go to a cutscene. Uh, just go through all that nonsense and then you'll be fine. So once you're once you get done with all the cutscene and stuff. Uh, this is where you can actually be inside the workshop. So back here you'll have your garage section and you'll see the Glendale inside here. Once you get in the car you want to press right, the right arrow on the D-pad to modify the vehicle. Let's tool her up. You're probably going to see it's so, called a different name. What's that is one of the features that the game gives you for free when you are modifying this vehicle. The name goes away if you transfer it to a different garage. Please keep that in mind. So let's go over the different upgrades that you will be required to get for this video. And then for anything else I will also go over uh, for cosmetics and also for improvements of the vehicle itself. So let's go over first of all what's required for this video. So what's required for this video is going to be two things. So I'm going to go up to the top here. The first thing you're going to need is boost. You're going to need shunt boost. After that is going to be, if you can get armor plating, get heavy armor. I would, I would require that because you're going to be damaging the vehicle quite a bit. And it will make you go here quite a lot less. Um, I'm also going to go over quite a few other things so that you can have more armor with a vehicle. There is more than just body work, so I do want to go over that. If you can get spikes as well, that would be cool. We don't have to for this video. It just makes the vehicle a little bit more dangerous. 
literally, and I'll explain why later. Uh, the next thing you're going to get that is required is going to be vertical jumping, which is vertical jump. You want to put that to jump upgrade 100%. That's just the required stuff, just vertical jump and shunt boost. Alright, so now that you got both of those, let's go over everything else that you can get. Race brakes, that's what you need for the, that's what you would have for the first option. After that you'll do body work, you can get spikes that will pop tires on cars if they are not bulletproof. Armor plating, you want to get heavy armor. I already said this earlier. Engine upgrade, level four. Uh, exhaust is up to you. Grill is also up to you, but I'm actually going to say uh, for the vehicle, it would be required to get the heavy plated armored grill. The more armor you have, the better. <clears throat> for the hood, you want to get the uh, heavy armored hood or the exposed heavy armored hood, whichever one you want. Horn is up to you. Lights are also up to you. Light covers, I would recommend getting both for the fr for the front and the back. I already have them. Livery is up to you. Name is up to you as well. Respray, totally up to you. For the roof, I would get the heavy plated armored roof. For the spare wheel, or if you want to get a spare tire or crates, it's up to you. I chose crates. Transmission, you want race transmission. Turbo, obviously turbo turning. You already know about vertical jump. For the wheels, uh, that's actually up to you, but for, you want, for the wheels you want to go to tires and then tire enhancement to get bulletproof tires. Anything else is up to you. Windows, uh, up to you as well. And then weapons. The ram weapon that you will want to have for this vehicle is going to be large scoop. That is the best weapon for, for ramming. For primary weapons, you want, you can uh, either one actually will not matter. I chose the plasma ones. You are also free to choose the other one, which is the 50.50 50 cal mounted guns. For proximity mine, I want to point out uh, three. Sp I want to point out specific ones that will be re useful to you. Uh, the only one that's not going to be really useful at all is going to be sticky proximity mine. This one only slows down vehicles, but only very for a very short period. It's very brief, like about one second, two seconds, like that's it. It, it doesn't do much. Slick, EMP, and Kinetic can do quite a lot to players. Slick will allow players and, of course, NPCs and cops and stuff like that. It'll allow them to slide it everywhere. And I mean literally. They will slide like an ice skating rink. It is hilarious to watch them. You know, he also, and when you're in the middle of a cop chase and cops start hitting that, oh, they, it becomes a huge mess quick if they start crashing into things. Very effective. You have EMP, that shuts down vehicles uh, for a good period of time, too, about five seconds or so. Five seconds or longer. So EMP is really good, especially when they hit multiple of them. EMP and Kinetic are the only two to actually be able to do any damage to vehicles. Um, spikes I have not tested thoroughly, but I know for a fact of what they do, which the spike proximity mine will be able to damage cars uh, and any, ve any vehicle really. Uh, it'll just basically pop tires, that's all it's really for. EMP and Kinetic will do damage to vehicles and blow them up. Kinetic mine is just like the one that you would see on a rat truck. Uh, when it comes to like the big monster truck uh, vehicle, they would get through Arena War. If you haven't seen that, don't worry about it. Uh, kinetic mines are more meant for having a little bit of fun tossing vehicles a little bit, uh, just to kind of make them lose control rather instantly. It'll really be helpful in cop chases. And just for basically having fun in general. It can even be good for players as they will lose control immediately. Forget slick. Kinetic would probably be a better option. 
I choose slick just to put him to kind of drag him into traps and stuff, uh, just to have fun with that. So I have my different I have my different ways of having fun, and so do you. You're free to choose whichever one. I might actually go with kinetic on this one, because not only will it hurt vehicles, it also will be pretty good. Now it does have a a decent purchase amount on on the money side, but that's of course up to you. So I'm going to choose Kinetic for this one. I like Kinetic. I personally think it's better than Slick. That's my opinion. You guys may have a different opinion. Don't blame me for that. So once you're all done, okay, we're going to exit bye the bye. arena via, via the vehicle. We're going to go to the Los Santos International Airport, LSIA. The next thing you're gonna learn is is uh, air is vehicle air control. Vehicle air control will be required for this vehicle in order to learn how to fly. Holy! Oh god! He's gone. Ooh! That was just beautiful. There we go. Vehicle is this vehicle is quite big. Do not mind that. All right, so now that we are at the Los Santos International Airport, let's go over the basics. Well, uh, you're probably gonna be asking, what do you mean by basics? By basics, I mean by aerial vehicle control. So I want to start out with a few things on what you need to know. First and foremost, you're gonna when you do a vehicle jump, this vehicle actually has a little bit of weight to it, as you already will know. If you jump in the air without the analog stick being moved, you will see that the vehicle will, on the back side, lift up. So when this happens, you will need to combat this by using the left analog stick facing down. So I will show you exactly how that's done. When you jump in the air, you see an analog stick going down, and it will not go up like that. See how I can get it perfectly straight? That is what it should be able to do. I know some people might have stick drift, and I know that's a really big problem across gamers, uh, just like me. I also have stick drift, so it does tend to bother me time to time. It might not for the video, but you might see it time to time. I'm not exactly sure. But if you do, don't worry about it. I know other people might have the same problem, but yeah, don't mind that. So anyways, back to the video. So the next step is going to be learning how to use the shunt. When you To activate the shunt, you hold X on the PS4 controller, A if you're on the Xbox controller, and then you want to tap LB or RB on Xbox and L1 or R1 on, P on PlayStation. I want to point out for that that you must hold the X or A button before pressing one of the bumpers. The shunt itself also has a cooldown. It does recharge pretty easily. It will recharge on its own and it's rather quick. It's enough to be spammable which is amazing. There's no glitch, no nothing that'll ruin uh, exactly what we're doing here. This is legitly known to how to fly with the Glendale, so I want to point out there's no glitches, no bugs, no nothing that will prevent, that will uh, bring any downsides to this video to make this a non-legit method. This is legit. It is not done by any glitches or any bugs by any means. This is just simply done using uh, exploiting the game mechanics, which is legitly known across the community. So let's go ahead and begin exactly how to get some air control. So before we get started with shunting, I want to point out exactly a different a, another feature that the shunt provides. The shunt boost will become more powerful when you gain speed with the vehicle. 
So the faster you move before you're shunting, the better. The more powerful that shunt's gonna be. So let's go ahead, by getting a little bit of distance. So when you first start going, jump, go to the left or right, and then activate shunt. The shunt's gonna face towards the right of the vehicle, towards the right side of the vehicle, or the left side towards the vehicle. Not towards, uh, away from the vehicle. Depending on which bumper you use, or which uh, button you use for L1 or R1 for PlayStation. So, when you activate shunt, it'll either activate on the right or to the left, and it goes away from the vehicle. So it basically shoves you in that direction. L1 being left, R1 being right, uh, LB being left, and R1 and RB being right. So, now that we've got that out of the way, so first of all, let's start with the launch. To launch the vehicle, you jump in the, you jump in the air, use left stick going down, in order to counter the up motion. Second step is gaining speed, then jump, using left stick down, and then aim towards the side, with one of the sides facing towards the ground. Once you do so, you immediately use shunt facing the opposite way, which is going towards the sky, just like so. Now, before you do anything, I want to point out a few, th a few good tips here. When you're first launching with the vehicle, you want to first gain speed. Obviously, it's going to be known. You don't need too much speed either. This mount is actually pretty good. Jump, go to one of the sides, and then immediately use shunt. After that, I'm going to also teach you a different trick here. So while you're in air, you're going to immediately know that you are going to be obviously sideways. So there's a little bit, you're going to have a little bit of trouble with car control, or aerial car control. So I want to point out exactly what the shunt is used for and how to control your car while you're in the air. So first and foremost, the shunt is actually used as the direction. is to show you which direction that you're going to go. So that's known for direction for which way you're going in the air. Now, I want to point out exactly how to change height and how to change speed. Changing height will be based on which way your car is faced while in the air. So first of all, let's do the launch again. As you'll see, I'm in the air. Charles going to notice that you're going to be uh, trying to combat different movements while you're in the air. So since I'm already in the air, I'm shunting. As you'll see here, you're also going to notice that I'm also facing the front of the car, known as the nose of the car. I'm also facing that either going up or going down. When you go up with it, you're going to see I'll also slow down, but also gain height. If you face it towards going down, I'm going to lose height, but I'll gain speed. As you'll see here. You're probably going to find this fascinating. This is actually known within the game mechanics. Once you know how to use this correctly, as you see here, I'm going across the city pretty quickly. To, in order to turn the nose of the vehicle going up or down, you must make sure the car is not facing a 90 degree angle. If it is, you are not going to be able to turn with the nose of the car. To do this, I want to show you a little trick. When you jump in the air, hold R1 and then turn with the left stick going left or right. For if you're in the air, this might depend on your direction of the v of the nose, on where you, on which side that you are when you first launched. So if you face towards the, so if you start jumping and you use the left stick to go to the left when you first launch, you'll be able to use the nose to go right to go up and then left to go down. But that's by holding R1 as well when you were turning. So I want to show that by showing you here. Jump, hold R1, and turn. Jump, hold R1, hold R1, and turn. 
If you if you don't know what R1 is, use RB, which is for Xbox, which is right bumper. Once you get that trick down, then you gotta put it together while you're in the air. So first, do a launch. Go to one of the sides. Jump in the air. Uh, using shunt. Once you got that down, you're probably gonna notice the the vehicle will face a 90 degree angle at certain times. If so, just tilt it to the left or right, and then you can hold R1 and turn with the uh, using. You can turn holding R1 and then using a left stick up to right. Then you can go ahead and use shunt in the direction that you need to go. And yes, you could point the side of your vehicle in different ways so that you can turn more easily. It's not too hard once you get used to it. As you'll see here, I'm changing direction all the time. So you might be able to follow me here. If you look closely, you'll notice how I'm using the vehicle. Let's say I want to slow down here. I want to make a turn. I'm going to use two quick shunts there. And then we'll go ahead and gain a little bit of speed. There you go. Now you know how to fly. Then all you gotta do is just keep on practicing and practicing until you get it right. Uh, the best place to practice this is at the Los Santos International Airport. That is where I have learned it mainly. I have also learned it at the Grand Sonora Desert. I find that that area is also more useful for it as well. So, obviously, as you learn, you're going to find certain things are harder than others uh, when you first are trying this. Once you get more practice and more effort into it, and you actually go and learn how to do everything, it's it becomes really easy afterwards. And you just start flying like crazy and you want to go to all these different places I've actually reached the top of Maze Bank multiple times and have been able to land there if I can do it you can do it so give it a try give it a whirl see how it goes for you and the customization options will vary on the pricing so I don't want to list exactly the most you're gonna pay the workshop itself is gonna be a million the car itself is going to be 200,000 and then plus there's going to be like a 1.5 mil, 1.6 mil, not entirely sure how much it's going to be. Uh, so I would definitely save up at least up to 4 million for the vehicle itself and then 1 million more for the workshop on top of that. That way you have plenty of customizations to go over and you'll be able to customize the vehicle in full. Right there is where I had stick drift. And then as you see here, I can also fly, basically, I can also use my other side of the vehicle if I ever so choose to. As you'll see here, I'm going to switch sides here. Not the best at it, but oh, when I get the chance, it's not bad at all. So yes, you can switch sides in the air and, and just keep on going. It's really cool. And now you can do tricks like this. You also know how to shunt faces in certain directions, and where it cannot shunt at either. And at the end here, I want to also give a tip for how to shunt vehicles while staying still. To shunt a vehicle while staying still, you must have the vehicle facing uh, against you. As soon as it's against your vehicle, it doesn't matter where it's at, about right here would do. You just use the shunt in that direction. And as you see, he just got launched. He might even touch. As you see right there, I just shoved him. I'm gonna touch him right here. And bye bye. He's gone. <laughs> And as you, wow, you just rode that wall. Okay then. And as you see, this shunt is very powerful. I think that's just about does it for the, vi for the video. And just for a little bit of fun here, I'm just going to go ahead and just test it one more time with the launching and everything. 
So as you can see, it'll be easy to fly around. You can just basically go wherever you want. We'll go over to Diamond Casino real quick here. And of course, I don't land in the best spot, but hey, you get what you get. There we go. Oh yeah, and if you jump and use the shunt, uh, basically at the same time, jump and shunt quickly, you'll be able to go side to side uh, right afterwards pretty strongly. So definitely test it out. Give it a whirl. See what you find out about it. See how you can use it in certain ways. Like, test it all you want. Like, have fun with this. This is like the most fun I've ever had with a vehicle in the game. So I mean, this by far is probably the best Arena War vehicle for free mode. Can't really say much more about it. Not really known for killing players, but it is known for having fun. If you love having fun, this vehicle is for you. Oh yeah, and then you have rocks me mines. Now I'm just gonna go right over that real quick. Oof. For the proximity man for the proximity mines, I wanna also go over one more thing. For the proximity mines you can only have five active. If you place any more than that, they will the last one that you set will reset. So basically the first one that you placed would reset in order to be the first one that you would have placed after placing five of them. So if you were, if it was the first one that you placed during the first five of them that you were activating, that last one that you first started with will become the first one for the next round. And it'll just keep repeating itself after that. So um, hopefully that'll give you an idea on how it works. So I'll just show here real quick. So you got one, two, three, four, five. As you can see, all five of them are lighting up. You do one more, and that one resets, and it's going to be over here. You see how there's still five of them? That's what I mean. As you're going to see, it'll totally stop me. I'm just going to turn around here and just go right against it real quick, because there's like four of them here, and why not? Whoa! And as you can see there, it totally stopped me there. So it can be used as a trap too. Hope this video helps you. Leave a like if you enjoyed it. Um, leave a dislike if you really don't care. If you just don't want to give a shit. Or if you just want to just simply put a dislike for no reason, feel free. Or comment below if you have any questions for me. I'm always open to answering questions. I will help anyone out with anything. If you want to add my gamer tag on for P for PS4, my gamer tag is always known in my about page on this channel. Feel free to message me on PSN, and I will hopefully see you in GTA Online. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one.